What's up everyone, welcome back to Just Finish Coding. This is part 7 of our Tic-Tac-Toe AI series on Scratch 3. So let's get coding. Just finished coding. Now quick interjection here, if you've not watched parts 1 to 6, please watch them before you come here because we're picking up from where we left off and you'll be very lost. I'll leave a card for you right here. Please watch those videos and then come right back. Now I do want to mention that all the code that I'll be uh, using in this video along with the files will be linked in the description below. So in case you do want to download anything or you forgot to do so, you can check the description of any video and then download all the files. In this video, we'll be mainly dealing with making our AI even stronger than what it is and making sure that it basically draws or wins in almost all the cases. And then in the next video, we'll be completing it off with the end screens and a little more fine tuning with our AI. So without further ado, let's get right into our program. Before I get into my AI, I do want to do a little bit of coding with my line draw sprite and also with my thumbnail. So head over first to the line draw sprite. You can just scroll down the menu and click on draw. And uh, as you can see, when we actually end the game, uh, such as now, I'm just gonna play and let the computer win. You can see that our animation is first of all pretty weird. And uh, it's also kind of odd because it's really, really narrow and tiny and we really want it to be thicker. So let's actually fix that. The first thing you wanna do is to make sure that your go to start core is right at the start. And this is going to make sure that even before, you know, you have this line drawn up where it goes up to the start core first, your pen sprite is in the right position. And right after a uh, go to start core, you do want to head over to the pen sprite or rather the, not the pen sprite, the pen code. And you want to set the pen size to be six. You can set it anywhere between six to 10. I just find that six works best in my case. But if you like the line to be a little bit thicker, then you can feel free to um, modify that value as you wish. So let's try the exact same thing again. Now you can see it's a lot better. And uh, you might also notice that the graphics quality is much lower than what it was. But that's what Scratch comes with and you have to bear with that. So you don't really have a choice there. And even when we do actually change up and let the computer win, now the you know pen draw is pretty uh, nice and in case we do make this thicker, it may look better, it may not. So you might want to play around with that value a little bit. So now let's get into our thumbnail sprite. So click on your thumbnail sprite and um, the only problem you will face with this sprite is when basically the um, uh, thumbnail sprite is drawn underneath one of the squares and that would happen if you move one of the squares such as like now. So I'm just going to hit the A key and then I'm going to move the square right up like that. And then now when I hit the green flag, you can see the square pops right up and that's really, really annoying for us. So uh, the only way you can fix that is to head over to the thumbnail sprite and then within looks, you just want to grab this block of code which says go to front layer and just put that right when the green flag is clicked. And this is going to ensure that your thumbnail is in front of everything else. And that's how you can fix your thumbnail bug. Now that our thumbnail is set up and ready, we can now get into fine tuning our AI. So scroll up the sprites and click on initializer, not the AI. And you want to add in a bunch of lists. So I'm going to initialize them and I'm going to initialize two of them for now. The first one is going to be called danger pause one. And the second one is going to be called danger pause two. And uh, make sure for all sprites is selected for both of them. And I'll explain what these lists do right away. So I'm going to play and uh, show you why our AI isn't invincible yet. So I'm going to make a move here, then here, and then right here. And now we actually win and the player wins and our computer definitely isn't invincible. And that's okay, but it isn't exactly our end goal. And we do want to make it invincible eventually. So to fix this, what I'm going to do is to hard code a set of positions where we'd actually violate our normal computer algorithm right here. And we'd make sure that uh, some of these steps are skipped or never actually execute in which case, um, in which um, at the time of these positions basically. So in case the positions are these, then we'll do something else. But in case, you know, this position is normal and everything is not the, you know, danger positions, then we'll go ahead with our normal algorithm. So that's the idea. So head over to your initializer sprite and you want to add two uh, lines of code right at the beginning. 
So the first one is going to be delete all of danger pause one and the second one is going to be delete all of danger pause two. Then you want to grab a repeat nine times from the control section, uh, grab that repeat 10 and change it to a nine. And what you want to do is to add in um, a space to danger pause one and danger pause two. And you may be thinking, wait, why would you want to add a space? You want to add in um, some coordinates as well, because um, in the first case, one is going to be our danger position. And in the second case, we just have our board flipped. And then three, um, letter three and letter seven will be occupied by the X. And then letter five will be occupied with the O. And in the first case, it's going to be uh, one and uh, nine, which are occupied by the X. And you'd be right. But uh, if we do it that way, we'd have to code in, you know, add add thing to danger pause, then we're going to add do that nine times basically. Now in this case, we can just make use of our repeat and then we can use something which says replace. And I think this is a far more efficient way to do our stuff. So I'm going to replace item one of danger pause with X. Then I'm going to replace item five of danger pause with O. And then lastly, I'm going to replace item nine of danger pause with an X. So I'll replace item 9 of danger pause with X. That's not item 5, that's item 9. Perfect. And that's our danger position 1 already set up. To set up danger position 2, I'm just going to duplicate that, change this to 3 and 7, and also change all these danger position 1s to be danger positions 2. And uh, that should make sure that all your danger positions are set up. And uh, keep in mind, we haven't programmed our danger positions just as yet, and we'll do that right now. To code in our danger positions with the computer algorithm, I'm going to head over to the computer sprite and then make a new block. And I'm going to scroll down right to the bottom where I have more space and then do that. So I'm going to click make a block and I'm going to call this danger pause 128. And uh, the reason I'm doing this is because this thing is going to be dealing with all our danger positions from 1 to 8. And uh, we also do not need to take in any parameters, so just click OK. And uh, once you have this set up, you just have a defined danger pause one to eight. But for now, we'll be defining only the first two. So in either of these two cases, we basically want to make the move to one of the edges and threaten to win right away. And I'm just going to make that edge two all the time in, in the case of the position being danger pause one or danger pause two. So to do that, just grab an if then from your control section or actually grab an if else and we won't code anything in the else tab for now. Uh, grab an and from your operators and uh, two equals twos. Uh, so put that in there. And uh, what you wanna put on either side of these equals two is to head over to variables, scroll a bit down. And now here you have all these lists in the form of these variables kind of thing. And you wanna put if danger pause one equals to square list or danger pause two equals to square list. So just put that right there and you have this thing set up. So in either of these two cases, what we want to do is to set comp move or actually did we do that in the end? I'm just gonna check that right now. I think we did that in the end. Um, okay, no, we did. So I'm gonna set move to be two and then I'm also going to set played to true. So set move, where's that? Set comp move, I think. No, it was set move. Uh, so set um, move to be two and we'll also set played to be true. So set played to true. There we are. And this is going to ensure that our danger positions are set up and working correctly. So to test that, I'm going to hit the green flag, click the A key and uh, actually try it out. So I'm going to try that and uh, you can see it makes the same move again. And the reason for this is that we've not used our function anywhere. So I'm going to scroll up all the way to when I receive comp to play and I'm going to be editing this a little bit. So I'm going to have this check winning uh, for the X and O or the O and X. But right after that, uh, I, do want to, I do not want to check the center. I instead want to check danger pause one to eight. So I'm going to remove all this code right here, keep it in the side. And I'm going to duplicate this line of code right here, the justice if then. And I'm going to change the check winning to be danger pause one to eight. And I'm going to put that right after that. And right after we have the danger pause one to eight, after the if then, I'm going to put in all the remaining code. So now when we test this out, I'm going to click the A key. And when we make the move here, once again, it seems to be making this move right here. And that's because of the following reason. 
Here's the reason, right below when we actually made the function, what we had was an AND when we really needed an OR. And the reason this never actually executes is because both these conditions aren't true at the same time. And we'd only want to check if one of those conditions were true. So I'm going to uh, change the AND to an OR and put those two conditions at both sides of the OR. And now when we actually test this out, I'm going to click the A key. And uh, now you can see it makes move two and pretty much everything works just as fine. Now, while this is great and our AI actually overcomes those two danger positions, there are still a bunch of danger positions that we have to be worried about. For example, when I click the green flag and then the A key, now when I make my moves like this, now you can see that the computer allows a double win and now the player can actually end up winning. And uh, let's fix that right away. So you wanna head over to the initializer sprite and similar to what you did right here, you wanna just duplicate this and keep in mind that in this kind of pattern where we have, you know, this set up or uh, rotated all around the board, we have eight danger positions to deal with. So what you wanna do is to duplicate this a couple of times until you've got eight positions. And I'm gonna throw out these two blocks of code and put all of them in. And you wanna change this to danger pause three, danger pause four and so on. But since we haven't initialized the list, we have to do them first. So I'm gonna click make a list, danger pause three, then make a list, danger pause four, make a list, danger pause five, uh, until I reach all the way to nine. And I'm gonna do that and then be right back. So I just made up my ninth list. I'm gonna click OK hide all these lists and now get into changing my code. So I'm gonna change this to danger pause three or the next one to be danger pause four, or the next one to be danger pause five, the next one to be danger pause six. And I actually made nine by mistake. What you really need is eight for now, but we will be initializing a couple of more danger positions. Actually, you need danger pause 10, just hold on a minute. So I was talking about eight, um, eight ones just like this where we have symmetry but um, you also wanna set up the initial two. So you'd actually have 10. So make sure you set up 10, okay? So uh, I'm gonna change this to danger pause seven. Danger pause eight is going to be this one. And um, I'm gonna also add in two more of these. Uh, one is going to be danger pause nine and the other is going to be danger pause 10. So perfect, that was a bit time consuming, but uh, it's okay, we, we will need this step right here. Now I also want to separate all of this just to make our code look a bit neater. So what you can do is to head over to the control section and grab a weight and just change that one to be zero. This is more like a segregator to ensure that we know what we're doing and we don't mess up too much with our code. So make sure you have a weight zero seconds right after you finish coding every danger position. So for your danger positions, what you wanna code is like one, um, uh, one, five, and then uh, six. So you wanna have the symmetry for all of these and that's going to be eight positions. And this is going to be a bit time consuming, so I'm gonna do that and then head right back. So I just wrote in all the code for that and you might just wanna cross check your code with mine if you did it um, on your own. So the first two we have as we had initially and then we have one, five, six and make sure you also change all these to the appropriate list. So I've gone in order like danger pause three, four, five and so on and don't leave all of this to be danger pause two, okay? You're gonna get some really, really weird bugs in your program. So the code is 156, 158, then we have 354, 358, then we have 752, 756, 952, and lastly 954. Now I'm not gonna be coding these danger pauses in the computer right now, we'll do that in the next video, and that's it we'll be coding in this video. If you've enjoyed this video, please make sure you leave a like, and also don't forget to subscribe and turn on the notification bell. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.